Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I wanted to feature a design update uh, on the Sabrin Speaker System 1309. You can see the uh, system pictured here in my living room. It's uh, a plan set that I introduced about a year ago and it's been very popular. Uh, a lot of people are very happy with the, the overall result. And um, so yeah, so I've just offered uh, design update which uh, further improves the sound quality which this change can also be implemented for those who have already built uh, the speaker system and so uh, I'm also going to show you some construction techniques that might help in the setup with the woodworking and the construction of this horn and I've uh, simplified a couple of things which I hope will help so let's get right into it I'm gonna skip over to my solid works and show you the 3D CAD model just so you can see some of the changes. Uh, firstly, the change that I made with the support stand is it's now been simplified. Prior to this, I had uh, two legs that were directly underneath the horn and there were some complicated angles to uh, set up. So I've just created this um, capture of the sides of the horn here. And so now the other changes that I've made, this is shown without the rear cover. Uh, let me just open this up and I'll show you uh, what we've done. So it's just going to bring in the uh, rear cover. And so the latest change is that we actually have a vented rear chamber instead of sealed. So the original design called for a sealed rear chamber. And so the little, a little bit of a backstory on this. So about four months ago, I was doing some experimenting and I found that by venting out the rear chamber, uh, you were able to extend the upper treble from about 11 kilohertz up to about 14 kilohertz and I'll show you those measurements in a second. And so just to finish off the design, um, it has this window opening and then um, I've just called out that you're to put some fabric glued into place. And so this simply just holds the polyfill or the pillow stuffing so the rear chamber still needs to be 100% lightly filled with the polyfill and then the fabric just kind of contains everything and so the this allows the planar transducer uh, to run open back and I've experimented with no polyfill and you certainly do need the polyfill in there so it just provides the optimal amount of dampening there so um, okay so what I'm gonna do is skip to the um, construction of this and so I'm going to show you an example drawing for the pedal and so this is what you'll get when you purchase the plans you'll get a PDF assembly and detail drawing plan set and so you can see here um, this is an assembly and it's showing what you're looking at uh, in the detail and so these are the vertical pedal for the first stage in the throat and so the drawing has uh, some complicated angles. I say complicated, but that's what I hope to walk you through in this video. And so you can see here, it's calling out a 42.8 degree angle on either, th either side. So the piece is symmetrical. And it also has a 15.5 degree angle that you have to cut. So there's a compound angle that's 15.5 and 42.8, okay? And so what I wanna show you is I have a miter saw actually done up in SolidWorks here and so you can see the miter saw and I'm just gonna hide um, hide this for a bit so you can see the miter saw just set up at 90 degrees both in the vertical and the hor and the, um, the horiz vertical and horizontal and so the first step is you're going to um, turn the table saw to that 15.5 uh, degrees I believe it was so you're gonna turn it to that angle and then you're going to also turn it to that 42 degree angle. So I'm going to hide this and show you what it looks like. And so you can see here that it's going to perfectly cut that. Now, if I bring back this um, previous setup, if we actually measure the angle here, so we measure the two angles between the blades, you can see here it's 42 0.81 and so what I'm trying to explain here is that you go from vertical and then you tilt it 42.81 degrees okay so that's what's indicated on this drawing the uh, 42.8 degrees and then the 15.5 is simply the um, angle 
that we set it to initially. So if we compare, um, let me just. So you're just gonna. I have the one uh, set up shown with it at 90 degrees, and then you're just gonna rotate it that 15.5 uh, degrees there. So I hope that's clear. So you're gonna go along and you're gonna cut these angles, and you can set up a stop here uh, so that you can do the other ones. And then you're gonna um, set up the miter saw in the other direction, um, just mirrored from, from this setup. And so I don't have any angles cut here on the ends. You can see that we still have angles that need to be cut. And so if I go to the table saw, I've done up a table saw just so you can see. After you've cut those compound angles, you can then take the pieces and run them through the table saw at the, at the angles that are indicated. Uh, on the print and I can go back to the print to show you those angles. So these angles here 11.8 and 16.1. Okay so um, I've just simplified the overall drawings to only inc include the critical information. This dimension here is what the piece is um, after you've cut it on the miter saw and then you notice too that after you cut these angles on the table saw you can see here there's air. Okay. And so if you cut everything right, then the horn will go together. Um, I've just deleted a lot of the additional dimensions that were more for verification after you've cut the pieces. But if you follow these uh, dimensions that I've included, then you'll be bang on and the horn will go together perfectly. So um, now another thing that's worth noting is that you can see here I've added a note that says this is the vertical piece, same as horizontal except for length. Okay. so. You can see that it's 001V, so for vertical, and then 001H for horizontal. You can see the horizontal piece. Now this piece is, identi is identical to the vertical piece. The only thing that's different are these is the overall length. And so when you set up your miter saw, the best practice would be to do all the vertical and the horizontal pieces all at once so that you're not setting things up more than you need to. So. I hope that helps uh, with that. Now I did do a blog post that um, showed the test results with the uh, vented rear chamber here and so you can see the frequency response and how we get good treble extension with the, uh, with the venting of the rear chamber and then we also get a smoother response through the lower treble. So you'll definitely notice an improvement in uh, overall uh, clarity and upper treble um, uh, detail I guess would be the best way to describe it so um, so I think that's it covered off everything uh, the woofers that I've called out in the plans uh, originally I had indicated for the Aton 12612 woofer and so there's some availability issues with that woofer and so in the product page I've included an alternative woofer which is a 12 inch Dayton that has nearly identical parameters and so it is a drop-in replacement uh, woofer and there's no changes to the passive crossover with that woofer compared with the Aton. So um, now the cabinet I've reduced the plywood thickness to from from 24 millimeters down to 18 millimeters which is more readily available currently um, with the shortage of uh, birch plywood. Now I can in Canada get uh, Chinese uh, birch plywood but the thickness the thickest that's currently available is 18 millimeter and so just to help out um, I've reduced the thickness of the uh, walls here on the horn and on the base cabinet uh, so that you can use 18 millimeter thick material. Now it seems that 18 um, is uh, pretty readily available. Now if you need a custom thickness please reach out to me I can produce a custom drawing set um, that's that will use the plywood thickness that you have available in your area. So that's it for today. Um, I believe I've covered everything on this so I'm gonna uh, post some links in the description. Um, take care and have a great day.